In the last week, our weather has just done some really crazy things. We were averaging in the mid-20s, which is seasonal for this time of year in July, and suddenly the temperature dropped to 15 degrees Celsius during the day. A few days later, it went up to 35, 37 degrees Celsius during the day, smoking hot, at least for this part of the world. We had wind, we had rain, torrential rains, almost gale force winds as well, but not today. Today, there's not a breath of wind in the woods. The temperatures are right around 21 degrees. There's not a cloud in the sky. It can't get any better than this. Okay, maybe a little bit better. We're still under a fire ban and the deer flies are out. I've been trying a few things with the deer flies with some success. We'll talk about that another time. But today, it's all about another lunch in the woods. And I have something special for you today. I have a stuffed pepper, a ketogenic stuffed pepper. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started on the recipe, what I thought I would do, I mentioned a minute ago that I am still battling with the deer flies in this area. And uh, I have a couple of things that I'm trying out. I'll show you what I'm trying out today. I made the mistake of not bringing what is likely the most effective deterrent, which is my uh, dragonfly buddy. And uh, people have asked about it. That last year this time, I, I started testing it out. And the only reason I haven't done a more complete review on it is, is I want to take it with me to New Brunswick when Gina and I go on vacation, because that seems to be the deer fly and horsefly capital of Atlantic Canada. And that'll give it its best test. But I did buy, buy another product, and for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it, but what it is, it's a peel and stick patch that you put on your hat. And the concept is, well, the dragon, not dragonflies, deer flies like to land from behind. And if they land on this patch, they get stuck. Well, uh, I didn't want to put the money out for that because I thought I can do this with duct tape, but I decided to. It's worthwhile if I can, if it'll work and it's something I can share with you, then it's worthwhile testing out. And there's the deer flies are around me right now, but I'll show you what I am trying out today. In the absence of my dragonfly wingman, that dragonfly wingman, that's what it's called. Here's what I'm trying out. Uh, I've got duct tape stuck to my hat. And so this is some of the uh, gorilla tape some of the better duct tape that is. And uh, really, I just pulled off a strip, folded the ends under, stuck it to my hat. As you can see, nobody landed on it yet, or if they have, they haven't been uh, stuck to the tape, but we'll see. I'm also trying out, well not trying out, I'm still using DEET and Percaridin, and, or Icaridin, depending on where you buy it. That's what I have on right now. Keeping the mosquitoes at bay, but I think the warm temperatures would have done that anyway but not the deer fly. They, I think they see that as seasoning on top of their meat. Okay, enough about the deer flies. Yes, I, God, I'm surrounded by them. Enough about the deer flies, let's get on to lunch. So a stuffed pepper. So this is something I wanted to try for some time. Uh, we made, we have made stuffed peppers at home and in our kitchen and using the oven to do that. And there are a lot of recipes uh, like this. I'm talking about bell peppers in this case. And quite often they're stuffed with rice as well as meat, maybe sausage, hamburger, and any other number of things. There are lots and lots of different recipes. So I was looking for a ketogenic recipe that would be light on carbs, heavier on fat and protein. And I also wanted to make it something that would be very simple for cooking in the woods so that if you wanted to try it, then you could. So that's what I've come up with. This one is, well, I haven't tried it in the woods. So once again, it'll be a bit of an experiment to see how well it works out. But this one is super simple. This does not involve any ovens of any type. It's, going, it's simply going to be done in a fry pan with a cover though. That's kind of important, some kind of a lid to use to keep the heat in, to melt the cheese and uh, cook the egg, as you'll see. Um, but it doesn't need to be done in an oven. You don't have to grill this, although grilling would give some nice flavor to it, of course, because uh, after it's cooked, that is to grill it, to caramelize the, the, the pepper a little bit. But yeah, okay, enough talk about it. Why don't we get down to my preparation space on the ground and start preparing it? So there's one step you can't skip when you're trying to prepare a meal in the woods, and that's, of course, getting your fire ready. And as I mentioned a minute ago, yes, we're still under a fire ban. Despite the heavy rain, the province was, uh, the fire ban was lifted for about two days, and then we went back up into the 30s yesterday, 30s degrees Celsius, and the humidity dropped, and that was the end of that. So I missed my opportunity to get out and have a fire, 
but of course I can have charcoal. So when I was preparing to come out today, I looked around my uh, too large collection of wood stoves and found this one I hadn't used for a while. This is the Alox or Alex or however it's pronounced. A uh, little charcoal stove that can be used with wood and can be used with alcohol. And it's uh, based on an ancient charcoal burner, the design is, but it is anodized aluminum with a steel interior. Uh, I do have a full review on this and it's quite an amazing little stove a little bulky because of its size but not too bad and uh, it's perfect for doing what we're doing today which is using charcoal so let's get this show on the road piece of wood wool likely more than I need but uh, that should get things moving fairly quickly and I have some chunk charcoal I'm gonna start with a couple of medium-sized pieces just on top of it to Give some room for the fire underneath. No, medium. I mean, you can get a lot bigger pieces, but you can get a lot smaller, of course. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to continue to build. You see, there's not a lot of capacity in this uh, stove, so I will have to likely replenish the charcoal as it goes, but that's fine. And uh, I may be able to pull some out for uh, putting on top of the the fry pan and, and cover that I'm going to be using today. Uh, I may not. I don't. It's not necessary for what we're doing, but if I want to, I could. I just pull a few pieces out with my tongs. But other than that, we'll just let this go until I have a good amount of heat, but it will generate plenty of heat for what we're going to do today. All right, now let's get down to preparing the pepper. So I've kind of rearranged myself here in the woods, trying to work with the light as it filters down through the uh, canopy of trees here. And uh, I have uninvited visitors. The ants are out in full force. They're not an issue, of course. One happens to get into my meal. Well, uh, he's just gonna be added protein, isn't he? But that aside, okay, let's get started. What have I got and what am I gonna be using? First off, let's just start with my vessels, my cooking vessels today. A little different. I haven't brought or I haven't used them in a video before, but I wanted to share with you what I picked up. Both of these came from Value Village, our thrift store. And when I found the two of them, it was like a match made in heaven. And the first one is the GSI, I think they call it Bugaboo, uh, hard coated non stick interior pan and it folding and locking handle. Uh, you know, it's a good size. I think that's an eight inch fry pan but this is a hard anodized aluminum pie plate that I picked up secondhand this one is made by a company called Fat Daddios nine inch it says all right so maybe the fry pan is nine inch as well and they nest one inside the other perfectly so now if you guys are followers of Steve Despain at the firebox stove and his channel and cooking which of course he does such an amazing job with You'll say that looks some, like something Steve sells on his website. That's exactly where I got the inspiration. No secret there. It was ideal. I picked up the fry pan. It will work in a number of ways. It'll work as a cover if I want to create an expedient oven between the two of them. I can put hot coals on top of this. It'll work out fine for that. If I want to use it just as a cover as I am today for the sauteing, as you'll see in a few minutes time, it works fine for that. It's also my eating plate, so I don't have to carry another plate. And as I said, everything nests together. So it is a nice match. And it would be, I would love to have the ones from Steve at the Firebox stove, and especially his new setup that he has. And I may well put that on my Christmas list, but it's not the cost of the set. It is the cost of shipping that hits us here in Canada, as any Canadian will know. It, uh, you know, there is the exchange on our dollar, but also the cost of shipping. So that aside, so what am I gonna be doing here? So I'm gonna be using this as my cutting board and preparation plate, and then everything's gonna be cooked in the fry pan, as I'll show you. So when I said this was a simplified version of this recipe, what I wanted to show you is just how easy it can be. So this is a red bell pepper that I'm gonna be splitting and cleaning out the inside of. I'm it basically, the pepper becomes a vessel for holding other stuff. That is my carbs for the day, and uh, that's all I really need when, when put in conjunction with the other things that I'll be eating. So I'll prep that in a second, put the container aside. Then the primary ingredients for this are two eggs, bacon, 
cheese. Doesn't get any simpler than that, does it? No simpler than that. So just to save a little bit of time, I did pre-cook the bacon yesterday at home. Uh, I kept as much of the fat with it as possible. It just saved me a little bit of time. I just chomped it, put it in the fry pan, fried it up, brought it all cooked, because you do need to have that pre-cooked before you put it into the uh, stuffed pepper. The cheddar cheese, two types of cheddar cheese. One's a jalapeno cheddar and the other one is just a regular cheddar mixed up. So lots of that already grated. I could have grated it out here, but uh, it was just easier to do that at home as well. And my two eggs. All right, let's start by prepping up the pepper. So I have my little knife. Uh, okay, I'm trying to see which will give me the deepest of the, uh, yeah, I think something like this will work the deepest receptacle, vessel, to cook in. And it doesn't have to be perfect, of course. But there, okay, that worked out all right. A uh, little bit of stuff to clean out in the center, not a big deal. In fact, I'll just cut it out so I don't accidentally rip the pepper and make big holes in it because that would work out not so well. Uh, this pepper is not the best shape. As you can see, it's got a cavity but some of the cavity has been pushed in on the side it will still work clean my seeds out I'll be taking those home of course and composting them at home okay so other than a few seeds that I still have to knock out this is the first part of the preparation here is a secret to doing stuffed peppers regardless of how you're going to do them and thus maybe indirect heat on a barbecue I think you may be able to do get away with it there but for the most part if you want the peppers to be soft and easy to cut and easy to eat at the end, pre-cook them. Just a small amount, not completely, just pre-saute them or pre-grill them, either way you want to do it. I'm going to be putting them in my fry pan with a little bit of water, covering it up, giving it five minutes over the heat, just so that I can soften the peppers up. Then I'm going to stuff them with the eggs, the bacon, and the cheese, and then we'll put it back in. So next step is, is just to soften these up a little bit, and I'll show you myself doing that. And it's only been a couple of minutes since I put the fry pan on the charcoal, but it's hot. It's not boiling, but it is hot. So I'll grab my two peppers. And uh, basically all I'm doing, as I mentioned, is just steaming them right now. This isn't meant to be fully cooked, just to soften them up. So eh, five, seven minutes. And uh, that little bit of water will be enough to soften them up. And then when I do cook them, at least they'll be soft right through and not crunchy in the middle. Unless, of course, you like crunchy. All right, I'll bring it back when I'm ready to take these off and then go on to the next step of filling them back up. I probably let it go about eight, almost ten minutes just to steam in here. And uh, the reason I did is I checked it a few times. Well, it's steaming a little bit better now. I had to rearrange some of the charcoal inside. Uh, I don't know if it was running out of heat. This is not a big stove, as you can see. It generates enough heat for doing what I'm doing, but it doesn't make it really, really hot. Okay, so you can see the peppers are in. Let me see, checking with the fork. Yeah, I can pierce them, but just. So that means they're still a little bit firm, but softer than they were before. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll move back to my spot where I will fill them up. Uh, I'll then come back and put a little charcoal in, bring the, the fry pan up to heat, and we'll go on from there. All right, so these are a little, oh, they're not too hot. Okay, good. I'm gonna be needing my fork and spoon for this next process. So they're softer, as you can see. Yeah, that look good. So what am I gonna do? Um, I'm gonna start by alternating a little bit of bacon, a little bit of cheddar and the eggs and then, or the, yeah, the eggs in each. And uh, then top off with a little bit more bacon, a little bit more cheddar, a little bit of cheddar. If I was making, according to a lot of the recipes, uh, it's funny, I was talking to my son just uh, Recently, my son living in the UK right now, and uh, he said he had made some on the barbecue just recently, and instead of rice, he used quinoa. So there are a number of things that you can use to fill your peppers with. When you're on the keto diet, of course, you're trying to maintain higher levels of fat and protein, 
than you were carbohydrates. So you're selective about what carbohydrates you're going to use. Quinoa, rice would be off the list most of the time. I say most of the time because it's total carbs in the day as well as the quality of the carbs. Okay, so see if I can do this without making a mess. My, my challenge here is that the peppers don't want to sit upright, so I've kind of got them propped up against each other. I, my intention was to leave the egg whole in its container with the yolk unbroken, but I don't think that's going to work well, so I'm going to have to break the yolk a little bit so it'll fill down into, don't fall out. So first lesson learned here for me is, uh, I'm losing some of my egg, pick the right peppers. I chose a long, narrow pepper thinking, okay, here's a good idea. Pick this long, narrow pepper because it'll pack easier. Problem with the long, narrow pepper is you can't get a whole lot into it, or at least not as much as I had hoped to get into it. That one seems to be a bit better. But once again, I think I will break the yolk just so it kind of fills in the gaps a little bit. Now at this point, as long as I don't lose too much of my egg, I can uh, kind of heap the rest of the stuff on top. The egg here will be the uh, assessment, whether or not it's cooked, because it, once the egg is fully white, and the whites has gone white, no branches, please. You know what? I almost forgot something, something vitally important, and that is spices. Not that this wouldn't taste good just by itself, but uh, this is the opportunity to put whatever spices you want in. So the big three for me are garlic. I do like my garlic. Could have put that in a bit earlier, I think. This is Cajun, similar to the spicy Montreal steak spice, but uh, that's good. Not quite the same. And some salt. Sea salt is my preference. This is not, but I will be replacing this salt with my with some sea salt. All right. Okay, that was almost a tragedy not to put the spices in. Now let's get a little bit more cheese on top. Some's going down into the plate inside. No big deal. Trying to use everything I have up, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think I'll stop now. There. All right. And that, of course, will melt and settle in. So the trick now is going to be getting it back into the fry pan, which I will do in one moment. I'll just check, and I put a bit more charcoal in to uh, bring the heat to uh, back up. And I have to let that go another minute or two, but I will bring it back when the fry pan is hot enough to put these in. Yep, lots of heat there. Now, uh, I am going to use ghee to fry up these in the fry pan. I could have used olive oil, could have used coconut oil. But ghee is a great, well, it has great flavor to start with, but it also has an extremely high smoke point. And that's important if you're trying not to burn what it is you're cooking, or at least burn the oil. I seem to have a bit of a tilt, but I think I'm going to be end up putting my peppers to one side anyway. So I got to reassemble my tongs to make this work. So uh, just a quick thing on the tongs. Uh, I got a shout out from Lonnie at Far North Bushcraft and Survival recently. Uh, he had seen me use these in an earlier video asked me how I'd made them, what I made them from, and I told him it's a piece of PEX piping. I think it was 3 8 that's what uh, Lonnie ended up using. It was just a leftover that I had from doing some plumbing around the house, and uh, he wondered in his video w whether I'd gotten the idea from him, because I think he had done something similar using a piece of hose, like garden hose or the like. And uh, Lonnie, well, I'd like to credit with you, actually, the, I just stole the idea from Steve to Spain at the firebox stove. Steve sells something very similar to this, and he has, you know, a 
fork and spoon, I don't know if it's knife, fork and spoon set, and some type of uh, device in the, that allows for springiness to be used. And uh, I just went looking for something springy, had a piece of leftover pecs, and that's where I got the idea. Not that I haven't gotten a lot of ideas from Lonnie over the years. Oop, that's a good sign. You can see the peppers got considerably softer, so this is a bit tricky getting them in without losing everything. Choose your peppers. That's my lesson here. Choose your peppers wisely. Okay. And I'll just pop this on top. Ooh, there's some heat coming under there now. Um, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15. I'll check it in 10. I'll let you, or I'll show you how I know if I feel they're ready. And uh, that's when I'll bring you back. So I got on to a few other chores here, like uh, filtering out some water, and uh, I lost track of time. I'm thinking around 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. I did check once a few minutes ago, and uh, <laughs> oh, man, look at that. I'll double check to see how it's looking. Cheese on top. All right, what I was looking for is the egg, and yeah, the egg is all nicely cooked up. Okay. This is going to be a bit of a challenge to get out of the pan, so I did bring my little spatula, scupula, whatever I want to call it. And I'm glad I put that ghee in, because otherwise I would have had a bit of a stuck to the bottom of the pan. Unless, of course, I had a nice cast iron pan, but I don't have, well, I do, but I just don't carry them in the woods. There's some extra egg and cheese that came out and part of my pepper that just fell off. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm just going to pour that right on top. Okay, what I'm going to do is reposition the camera. But uh, I'm going to get my kettle on for coffee. Make, make use of that heat. And I'll bring it back and we'll do a taste test. All right, I have to tell you. This has to be one of the meals I'm more excited about trying that, that I've done out here in the woods. And I think it was because when I lifted the plate off the top of the fry pan and I saw, oh, and the smell, I'm incredible. So I can show it to you. Unfortunately, I just can't share the smell with you. Okay. Get off, ants. This is my meal. I'm using my sit pad as a... Uh, uh, holder because it is hot. Let's see if I can show it to you first and then I'll cut a piece and we'll come back and try show it to you again. Always a challenge finding, there we go, make sure, there I think that's in focus. So you can see the peppers have nicely softened up, bacon, cheese and egg and of course the spices to go with. How can you go wrong? All right let's see if I can get set back up into my seated position. Ooh, it is hot. Aluminum fry pan conducting the heat. And I'm surprised that it's hot. All right. So let me see if I can... Uh, that's not a good one. I gotta show you something better than this. Wow. Wow. All right. One second, let me show you what I'm eating. I can without dropping it, because that would be a shame. It's kind of soft, so... All right, now, once again, see if I can bring you into focus. Ah! Like I said, it's soft. Peppers, eggs, and bacon, and cheese. Okay, let me describe this to you, because it is... Incredible. So, on a ketogenic diet, there's a few things you're looking for, and uh, once again, if you're interested, I will do a more thorough video on ketogenic diet and being out in the woods, but there are a few things you're looking for. You want the primary amount of your calories coming from fats. Good fats, ideally, but just about any fat will work. You just want good, healthy fats, because some fats aren't as healthy as others. Um, after that, you want protein, a significant amount of protein, not as much as fat. 
And at the bottom end, you want your carbohydrates. And some foods are much more dense with carbohydrates than others. Things like potatoes, rice, uh, pasta. Uh, those are very dense with carbohydrates and they tend to be made from refined flours, which mean they're even worse, almost like sugar. White flour you might, and white bread, you might as well be eating sugar. And of course, no sugar. There's no sugar on a ketogenic diet. Not to say that we, there aren't sweeteners that we use, but no sugar. Uh, those things will spike your insulin, which leads to a whole lot of health problems, and you can avoid them all by eating primarily fats. So what I've done here is I've used a red pepper as my carbohydrates. Now, just a word on that, because I'm, sure, I'm sure somebody's saying, Mark, Mark, that red pepper. Uh, red peppers and green peppers. Well, red peppers are just green peppers that have matured longer on the vine. Uh, red peppers tend to be sweeter as a result of being on the vine longer. In fact, these are incredibly sweet. And now that I've cooked them and caramelized them a little bit, they are sweeter. So is this the best ketogenic vegetable I can get? No, it's not the best, and it's not even the best pepper. Green pepper would have been a little bit better, but it tastes good. So I'm not too worried about this because once again, it's not just the carbs per meal, it's the total carbs per day. And this is well within my limits. Mm. Some of the cheese uh, and bacon came over the edge onto the fry pan as well, caramelized a little bit. With my spices, oh, I don't know. And this was the simple recipe. Wow. Okay, there are more, not I don't want to call them advanced, more complex recipes that will use other ingredients as instead of or in, in addition to what I've used here, uh, cooking methods such as indirect heat or in grilling or baking, which I have done in other things in the past. I just wanted to make it something very simple as you saw today. Uh, wow. Oh, okay, I can't get over this one. This goes on my list of all-time favorites. This is something I'll make again, if for no other reason than the... It did take a little bit of work. Okay, it wasn't as simple as just a mountain house meal. It took a little bit of work, but there's no mountain house meal that I know of that'll come anywhere near this. And, of course, they're not ketogenic-friendly either. Oh, I will put what I've done here in the video description underneath. Let me know if you have done stuffed peppers out in the woods. Share your recipe with me and with everybody else. Share your method of cooking. I'd be interested in seeing. If you have any questions about this meal or any other meal that I've done or anything for that matter, please put those in the comment section below. Uh, but try this. And if you do try this, let me know. I'm, I'm really keen to hear how other people feel about something as simple and delicious as this. Yes, I had to bring out some fresh vegetables as well as some cooked things, but uh, worth it. Worth it. The weight penalty for taking this out and the fact that I'm going to have to use day one and probably day two, worth it. Absolutely. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I am going to be making myself a cup of coffee to go with this after I finish this meal. That coffee is going to be under a separate video because I have a unique method of making coffee that I want to share with you that I have not seen anybody else do in the woods. So stay around for that or watch for that. It'll come probably a few days after this video. But in the meantime, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now. And this is still hot, so I'm still going to be enjoying it. Look at this.